Wagner on the political sociology of public action. This is a partnership between uh, the Lopi at the University of São Paulo and the National School of Public Health. Pleasure to have you here. It is a pleasure to let you um, know what's new on, on the French sociology and how you see as all public things. Uh, today we'll have a very nice webinar. I hope you like it as, as much as we are enjoying today. Your moderator will be Professor Patrick Hassan Teufel, and I give him the word now so that he can introduce our guests and start the activities. Have a very nice webinar. Hi everyone. Uh, sorry, I think uh, we had a, a little uh, delay with uh, with this uh, opening. Uh, I'm not sure if everyone can hear me well. I'm go just going to say a, a few words before uh, Patrick uh, starts uh, presenting the 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 uh, our participants, uh, our speakers today, and uh, the uh, op uh, starting the. In the, the webinar. Uh, just uh, uh, if you can confirm in the chat if you can hear me well. Okay, thank you very much. So I would like to, to thank also uh, um, uh, Regina and uh, the whole staff uh, of uh, uh, ENAP uh, for, uh, for uh, uh, organizing, helping us to organize this uh, cycle of webinars, and also to um, uh, for the organization and publication of uh, of the book. Uh, it's been uh, great to uh, to to work with them. Uh, as you as you uh, know, uh, this cycle of webinars is uh, uh, an, uh, an event promoted by uh, the uh, National School of Public Administration, the ENAP, uh, as well as the uh, Program of uh, Graduate Studies in Public Policy and Management uh, of the University of Sao Paulo and uh, the Laboratory of International Public Policies of the Federal University of, uh, of Sao Paulo. And I'm very happy with this uh, partnership, bringing together uh, some of the most important institutions uh, uh, working with uh, policy studies here uh, in Brazil. So I wanted to say uh, to you to bring some news. Uh, uh, the news is that uh, the, the book, the printed version of the book, uh, Political Sociology of Public Action, is going to be uh, available for pre-order uh, really soon. And we are going to share with you uh, the link uh, for those interested in buying the, the printed version of, uh, of the ebook. Uh, we're going to share the link in our social media, in uh, the Labopi social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, we're going to do this really soon. And uh, uh, as some of you uh, asked for the printed copy in the first webinar, we wanted to share this information in first hand here with you uh, today. Uh, but uh, you can also download the, the digital copy of the book for free uh, in the internet. So with no cost, uh, you can download this at uh, the, uh, the library of the National School of Public Administration and app. We are going to uh, include the link uh, here uh, in the, the chat uh, uh, for you to download the book if you haven't uh, downloaded it yet. Uh, so uh, last, uh, um, 
uh, thing I wanted to say here is uh, uh, for you uh, who's following us from YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. There is a lot going on in on our YouTube channel about uh, policy studies uh, and different topics uh, on uh, policy diffusion, international uh, public policies. And uh, it's uh, uh, if you uh, subscribe to our channel, you can get all the notifications for everything that's going on here. Uh, also follow us on our social media, uh, the, uh, the Twitter, you, uh, Facebook, and uh, Instagram of Labopi, because it's there where we are uh, always sharing the information about the webinars, the events that we are uh, uh, organizing. Uh, so thank you very much again, uh, Regina, the staff of, uh, of ENAP, uh, and also uh, thank uh, Patrick Asantefo, uh, uh, who is uh, my co-organizer and a great collaborator of, uh, of the book. Thanks, uh, Anne Cecilia uh, Duyer, uh, for being here with us today, presenting her chapter uh, of uh, the book, and Renaud uh, Epstein as well for being here, for uh, uh, offering your time, your precious time, to be here and share your knowledge with us. It's a gr great pleasure to receive you. I now uh, give the word to uh, Patrick. Merci. Obrigado. Thank you very much. Osmani, and thank you very much to, to the ENAP team for this for this organization of the, this uh, webinar series. Um, so today is the, the third uh, session of uh, of our webinar. Uh, with like the la last time and the, the first time, two uh, two presentation of two of two chapters. Uh, we will start. Uh, with the chapters written by Anne-Cécile Duyer. Uh, she is a professor of uh, political science at the University of Lille in the north of, of France. Uh, and she will present her, chap her chapter on political parties, and the, the, the role of uh, political parties in public policy from a, a political sociology perspective. Uh, then we will have a, yes, a, I just want to mention that uh, her chapter is the chapter 19 uh, in the book. And then we will switch to uh, Renaud Epstein, uh, who is professor of sociology at, at Sciences Po Saint-Germain-en-Laye, close to Paris. Um, and he will present uh, his chapter uh, focused on the relation between uh, the local level and the national level uh, for public policies. Um, uh, the chapter he wrote is the chapter 11 of the book. And then after the, the two presentation, we will switch to the, uh, to the discussion with, a, so you, you can ask your question on the chat and also on the YouTube, on the YouTube uh, channel. So thanks again for being here. To, for attending this uh, this webinar and the world is for Anne Cecile. Okay, you. thank you. And uh, she has a, a PowerPoint presentation. Yes, I will share it. Uh, okay. Is it okay? The PowerPoint presentation? Yes. Yeah, it's okay. okay. Yeah. But this is not the first slide. OK. Uh, so thank you, Osmani and Patrick, for uh, organizing this webinar. And uh, thank you also to the interpreters, whose job is uh, probably not very easy, translating French people, talking English into Brazilian and uh, sign language. So thank you also to, to the interpreters. Um, so as uh, Patrick said, uh, in the book project, I was in charge of uh, what became chapter uh, 19 about political parties. And for this presentation, I reduced uh, the title of the chapter into uh, political parties in the, the, the policy process. Uh, the question I deal with in the chapter I wrote uh, can be summarized as follows. Are political parties policy actors. Uh, 
in a way, the very structure of the book uh, published by Patrick and Osmani tends to answer yes to this question, as my chapter devoted to uh, political parties is located in the third part of the book, which is precisely uh, about policy actors. However, uh, political parties are rarely scrutinized as such uh, in public policy analysis even though many works do consider the impact of uh, a political variable or even of a party variable, uh, asking the questions, do political parties matter? But this does not mean that, uh, public, uh, that the political parties are really scrutinized uh, in policy process analysis. So this is in a way uh, the paradox um, the, in a way, this paradox is uh, the starting point of uh, my reflection. So, uh, in my presentation, uh, my purpose, uh, the purpose will be first to present the way political parties and public policies are linked uh, in the literature, and then on the basis of recent works, I will try to argue for a new orientation uh, in the analysis of party policy link. So uh, my presentation will have uh, three parts as uh, indicated in the slide, on the slide. In the first part, uh, I will present briefly the main analytical schemes used to link political parties and public policies. In the second part, I will have an overall look at these paradigms, asking what are we really talking about when we mention uh, parties in policy studies? And this will lead to a third part in which I will try to open the way to analysis, uh, which consider parties for what they are, I mean, organization, because this is uh, one of my point uh, to say that if parties are, um, are mentioned in many uh, policy studies, they are not really considered uh, as organizations with, which can be a problem. Um, before really beginning my presentation, just another quick point uh, to say that uh, I dealt with uh, these questions in the, the chapter of uh, the book edited by Osmani and Patrick but also in a special issue of a French journal called uh, Government and Publication. Uh, I edited this special issue with a, a colleague called uh, Raphael Coz. And in this issue, uh, entitled Political Parties in the Policy Formulation Process, we ask uh, the following question, how do political parties work on uh, public policies? And this question is uh, another way to deal with the questions I raised uh, in the book. So this is why my presentation will be based uh, both on the chapter and on the journal uh, special issue. And this is why uh, in my presentation, I do not follow the, the structure of, uh, of the book chapter. So let's try first to present, as I said, uh, the main analytical schemes linking political parties and uh, public policies. I identified three main ways uh, to consider the, the, the relationship between political parties and uh, public policies. The first one uh, is focused on political parties. And uh, it considers uh, policy issues as the driving force of party competition. And uh, this statement uh, is at the heart of what we are, what, what are called uh, issue competition theories. So this is the, the first way to link uh, parties and political and uh, public policies, uh, uh, focusing on the way uh, political parties uh, um, use policy issues uh, in this party competition. The second one is more focused on policy outputs and ask the question, do political parties matter? So the focus is another one. It's not 
the parties anymore, but more uh, the policy outputs. And uh, the, the question is, do political parties have an influence on these uh, outputs? And the, the, the third uh, way of linking uh, political parties and public policies is uh, found in uh, French political sociology of publication, which uh, pays more attention to actors, uh, including political actors and the role they play in the policy process. And looking at the way political actors um, have a role in the policy process, uh, we find political parties as these political actors are uh, really often uh, members of uh, political uh, parties. So I will say now a few words uh, on each uh, approach. So the first approach, as I said, uh, refers to issue competition theories developed, for instance, by uh, Stokes, Robertson, and uh, more recently, Green Pedersen. And to summarize uh, the way these theories uh, link political parties and the public, public policy, we can say that uh, in this perspective, each party struggles to impose in the public and political debate the issues it owns, and then tends to favor this issue once in power. So this is a, a, an international uh, perspective, but in France as well, such a paradigm has inspired uh, many research programs and publications, as mentioned uh, uh, on the slide. And some of these uh, works uh, include surveys on the fate of electoral pledges. And uh, some of these works even try to, to specify the conditions uh, under which parties' pledges can be uh, fulfill, fulfilled. So this is for the first uh, orientation. As for the second way to link political parties and uh, public policies, it is structured around uh, the question, do political parties matter? And this uh, perspective has given birth to uh, many surveys, ma mainly quantitative uh, approaches. And these surveys try to assess the impact of ruling parties on the orientation of public policies, on budget, for instance, or on the orientation of specific sectorial issues. Uh, at the international level, uh, for instance, the Comparative Agendas Project have provided the basis for many surveys assessing the correlation between policy outputs understood, for instance, uh, across uh, legislative agendas. So correlation between these policy outputs and uh, the, the, the party in power. And the conclusions of uh, such research programs are not uh, univocal, but some of them do identify what we can call a party effect, which means that uh, when there is a change in the party in power, uh, there might be a change in the uh, policies conducted. Uh, as for uh, my third category, uh, which refers to French political sociology of uh, public action, as I said, it uh, pays more attention to actors and uh, processes. Uh, but the first point to underline here is that uh, political actors have long been attributed a secondary role uh, in public policymaking. Uh, actors like interest groups or civil servants getting more attention in the study uh, of the state in action. Actually, uh, the, 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 the focus on political actors is um, gaining more interest uh, recently, but they have long been considered ad, as a, a secondary actors. Um, however, uh, political parties have been considered uh, in some of these works. Uh, for instance, um, the so-called cognitive approaches have considered political parties as forums. Uh, that is to say, 
spaces where policy issues are debated, where policy problems are raised and a solution uh, elaborated. I uh, put some of uh, these uh, works uh, as examples on, uh, on the slide. Uh, another kind of uh, works we can include in this uh, French political sociology of public action uh, is the, 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 research pro the research programs trying to better articulate policies and politics, uh, mainly at the local level, uh, which are um, research programs uh, which try to grasp the way candidates or local elected representatives take part in the policymaking process. And in this analysis, the relation uh, of these elected representatives to the party they belong is one of the dimension which is taken, uh, which is taken into account. Uh, some of these works, uh, for instance, works on uh, local security policies, also showed that uh, the intensity of party competition can have an impact on uh, the agenda setting, that is, uh, on an impact on the, the, the policies which are uh, conducted. So, uh, what we can conclude at the end of this uh, first part of my presentation uh, is that there are many ways, actually, to include uh, political parties in uh, the policy process analysis. But uh, if we have an overall look at these different approaches, we may wonder if we are really talking about political parties in these works. Uh, my assumption is that party is actually a kind of metonymy of uh, something else in most of these uh, works. Most often, we are not really talking about parties, but about something else. In the works I mentioned, uh, parties are not really considered as what they are, I mean as organizations. Um, to, 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 to go on this uh, general idea, uh, I would uh, detail uh, these, uh, these assumptions saying that uh, in some of these works, when we talk about parties, we actually talk about a right-left variable. The, in, the, in these works, the purpose is then to assess the impact of political alternation and the conformity uh, to political orientations of uh, ruling parties. So in these cases, parties are reduced to a variable referring to a political stance. We do not really talk about parties, but more about a, a, a political stance. Uh, in other uh, of the works I mentioned, parties uh, refer to manifestos. Uh, manifestos which are, which are considered as uh, fixed pledges, as uh, coherent on steady sets of proposals which are supposed to be which are supposed to be implemented by the party in power. So in some of the words I've, I mentioned, when we say parties, we actually refer to platforms and uh, manifestos. Uh, in other works, uh, what is called parties is actually more a political level. Uh, in these works, uh, parties are a kind of a political label attached to uh, an elected representative. So in these works, we therefore do not really analyze the role played by a party, but rather the role played by a specific member of this party, whose specific relation to his or her party is not always really scrutinized. So I would say that uh, the partisan identity is assumed, uh, but the role of the party as such is not really studied. And finally, uh, in the above mentioned uh, cognitive approaches, 
parties are seen, as I said, as political forums, which means uh, spaces for discussion and, uh, and debate. But the way these debates are structured um, is not really considered. So once again, uh, we, we do not really enter in the uh, political parties. So to try to go further now, uh, and to try to take political party uh, seriously and not as a metonymy, so to speak, um, there might be a, a way to reconsider the role uh, of political parties in the policy process by looking at practices, at internal power relations, and at the work through which partisan actors construct, diffuse, or convert into devices policy proposals. So this is uh, uh, the idea uh, I will try to develop in my, in my third part. So what does taking political parties seriously mean? Uh, it first means to grasp parties as organizations. Uh, and this implies considering internal divisions uh, within parties, divisions which might be ideological, but which can also be related to internal uh, lines of hierarchy. And um, in a way, this is, um, uh, this was uh, Rosa Mulle's proposal uh, when she invited us in the 1990s to uh, take into account, into account what she called parties underworld. Uh, for many years now, Rosa Mullet has been asserting that conceiving of parties as miniature political systems provides an altogether richer and more suggestive account of the party policy uh, link. And uh, our proposal is to uh, follow uh, her advice. And um, taking political parties seriously also means to look carefully as what is done within a partisan organization. How are policy issues concretely dealt with within partisan uh, arenas? So this is what I mean when I say that uh, it could be interesting to take political parties uh, seriously. And uh, reconsidering the party policy link, taking political parties seriously, also means to ask other questions beyond the questions of impact and influence of political parties on public policies. Uh, this perspective is therefore uh, an invitation into the black box of political parties to see the extent to which and under which conditions there are species of production, diffusion, and mobilization of knowledge about and for public intervention. So the question is whether party expertise on public policy exists and how it is produced. So concretely, this means looking, for instance, at commissions set up within parties or looking at foundation or think tanks link uh, to political parties to see how uh, and if political parties um, have an expertise on public policies. And this also means investigating the resources, networks, and so on political parties rely on to produce an expertise on public policies. In a way, uh, this perspective enhances issue competition theories through a reflection on the conditions of this issue competition, uh, paying attention to the construction of issues by partisan organization. We can believe in an issue competition, but there is a further question to ask, which is how are these issues uh, built on within parties? So the questions here could, can be, who is interested in uh, policy issues within parties? When are, policy, uh, are party members interested in uh, reflecting on uh, policy issues? Is there a standing interest 
for policy issues within parties. Uh, what are the material supports for uh, work on uh, public policy within parties and so on. So this is an invitation to have a look at uh, the way uh, party members concretely uh, work on uh, policy issues. And uh, if reconsidering the, the, the party policy link, taking political parties seriously uh, is an invitation, as I said, to go beyond the question of uh, impact or influence. This does not mean that these questions of influence or impact are irrelevant. I, I still believe that uh, it's important to, to wonder if uh, political parties uh, matter. But uh, we'd rather ask the question, how do political parties matter rather than do political uh, parties matter? Um, because I think uh, this perspective, uh, the perspective asking the question, how do parties matter, uh, can provide a, a more realistic grasp of the impact of parties on public policies by analyzing the way partisan position are mobilized in policy arenas, uh, not considering that uh, these party uh, stances are fixed but rather considering that they are uncertain, plural, and that uh, the, the, the change uh, um, according to time and uh, uh, members uh, mobilizing these uh, proposals. So having a look uh, once again at uh, the way uh, party members uh, deal with uh, policy uh, proposals, uh, we can go further uh, to understand how political parties uh, impact on uh, public policies. And uh, for instance, uh, in this perspective, we can say that parties matter even though the policy outputs do not match with the assumed party programs. Because in some cases, the divergence between uh, parties' proposals and uh, policy outputs can be explained by internal party dynamics. What I mean is that we can say that parties matter, even though uh, the policies which are conducted by the party uh, in power are not uh, in conformity with the, 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 the manifestos they, they, they had uh, edited in the campaign, for instance. So uh, these will be my uh, final uh, words. Um, uh, thank you for your attention. And uh, we will uh, have the opportunity to, to go on discussing uh, after uh, the second presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, and Cecile, for your presentation. So now the... The word is for Renaud Epstein for a second presentation, then we can, then we will have our, our discussion. Okay. Uh, thank you, Patrick. Thank you, uh, Osmani, for offering me the opportunity to contribute uh, to the book and uh, for the invitation uh, in this uh, webinar. So my uh, chapter uh, aims to present the ana analytical frameworks of central local uh, relations in policy making developed by French scholars over the past half century. During this long period, uh, France went through major institutional transformations. Uh, uh, that have had an impact on uh, the, the evolution of the research agendas. This is why my uh, presentation will follow a chronological thread distinguishing three main periods. The, the first period uh, corresponds to the historical model of the what we call the Jacobin state. 
uh, local policy making was then analyzed by researchers through top-down approaches focusing on the state and its uh, administration. The second period starts with us uh, with uh, uh, sorry, I had forgotten that I had a PowerPoint. Uh, the second uh, period starts with the uh, decentralization laws of the early 90s that moved large parts of local decision making and policy implementation away from state control. Many policies that were that used to be conceived in Paris, in central uh, uh, government, that were used to be implemented locally by powerful national administration, uh, ranging from uh, uh, urban planning to social policies or cultural policies, have been transferred to local and regional uh, governments. These changes were reflected in the theoretical frameworks used for local policy analysis. In a words, what used to be state centers have given way to more uh, localist and pluralist approaches in which the state, the state is only one stakeholder among others. And uh, the third period uh, began in the early 2000s with reforms concerning both local authorities, uh, that's what we call uh, the second act of decentralization, and uh, reforms concerning central government that combined to achieve the, what can be summed up as a withdrawal of the state administration from local policy, from local policy making at least. But this withdrawal uh, has paradoxically allowed the state to regain a capacity to control local policies. That's what has been coined as remote control or steering at a distance or steering at arm's length. This third period uh, also corresponds to the development of a new field in public policy analysis, uh, that of policy instruments. Uh, let's start with uh, the first period uh, and the traditional uh, functioning of the French system of local government, which is prior to the decentralization. As you may know, France is a centralized unitary state. Uh, in its uh, basic structure, the system of local government, of local policies, or I should say the system of local administration uh, was organized with respect to two, net, uh, two networks, two pillars. The first, uh, which was administrative and vertical in nature, was centered around the emblematic figure, figure of the prefect. The prefect is the state's representative in a, in a department. And the second, uh, which was electoral and horizontal uh, in nature, was built around the locally elected uh, officials. So we had two pillars or two networks uh, that were very uneven, with on one side a very powerful administration highly hierarchical and uh, very bureaucratic. And on the other side, a weak, what was considered as weak local governments uh, who undertook very few functions, few tasks, and who had limited discretion of, because their activities were subject to uh, central oversight and uh, limited finance. Uh, to put it briefly, uh, local policies were defined in Paris and implemented in a standardized, standardized, sorry, way all over France. Uh, okay, this was a kind of a theoretical model, uh, the Jac Jacobin state. Uh, the reality was a little bit bit more complex than what I just presented, as uh, shown by the work carried out by Michel Crozier and his team uh, in the 60s that focused, uh, focused on game structures and bargaining relations between local government representatives and local elected officials. 
their social sociological approach to bureaucracy highlighted uh, the importance of informality in center periphery uh, relations uh, which rebalanced a little the central co control over local actions. Uh, two main mechanisms were at stake. First, uh, thanks to what we call multiple office old holding, uh, which is um, a way to describe the fact that in France, uh, some mayors and uh, almost all the presidents of departmental councils were also a uh, member of parliament and therefore had uh, direct access to the central government to advocate uh, for their territory. So furthermore, and it's a second mechanism, informal mechanism, uh, these mayors, these uh, elected officials uh, were able to bargain with prefects over ma matters of local interest. All of this has been uh, described as by uh, Pierre Grémion uh, as domesticated Jacobinism. Uh, while uh, the prefects relied on the political le legitimacy of uh, the elected officials in order to obtain uh, social acceptance for the policies designed at the national level, uh, the elected representatives bargained with the prefects over the technical and financial means to be used in achieving their own political programs and thus their own uh, re-election. Um, the second period uh, starts with the decentralization laws that were adopted in France uh, after the election of François Mitterrand, the first socialist president in France. In, uh, so these, these laws were adopted in 1982 and they initiated a dynamic of loosening of the state's grip on local policies. Uh, these laws developed devolved, sorry, uh, significant powers to local, departmental, and regional bodies. Uh, to sum up, three main changes, uh, changes occurred. Uh, first, uh, the end of uh, uh, the uh, prefect's uh, stewardship on uh, local authorities. Uh, second, uh, the fact that the departmental executive power uh, was transferred from the prefect, so the state representative, to the president of the departmental uh, council, which was uh, elected, ele who was elected. And third, the uh, creation of a third uh, authority, so the level of, uh, of uh, local authority, which was the, the region. Uh, this decentralization, uh, decentralization reform was the first obvious origin of changes that occurred in the 90s in French public action. Uh, the growing influence of the European Union, of its regulation uh, devices and its policies was another, and the changes were prolonged. Uh, with the growing role of private actors in uh, public policy. All, all these has combined to create a dynamic of plur pluralization and uh, what we could call police centricity in uh, local public action. This, so all these were major changes in the French uh, model and uh, these changes requ required a new descriptive, a new analytical tools uh, so during the mostly the 90s, French scholars developed or sometimes imported from abroad a uh, new uh, analytical framework of local policy action uh, of uh, central local relation. Uh, this in the, and in these frameworks, the state was not central anymore. Uh, to many observers. Uh, the notion of governance 
urban governance, uh, regional governance, territorial governance, multi-level governance, uh, seemed uh, appropriate to describe a situation where top-down asymmetrical central local relations had given way to a more pluralist type of relations uh, and more horizontal processes of policy making for the researchers who imported this concept uh, in France, uh, namely uh, Patrick Le Gallès, uh, the concept of governance by opposition to government was intended to emphasize the pluralization of uh, systems of actors, the end of uh, hierarchical uh, relations, uh, the growing role of uh, policy networks, and the porous character uh, of the traditional boundaries between the state, the market, and society, as well as between the sectors and between uh, level of government. Um, so, as you may see, the, the, the state is not anymore central in this uh, in these approaches, uh, in the governance approach. Uh, some French uh, scholar uh, try to reintroduce or to maintain uh, the, the state uh, in. Uh, in the frameworks of uh, analysis of uh, local policy. For example, that's what did uh, Patrice Durand and Jean-Claude Tonig with the concept of institutionalization, institutionalization of collective action. Uh, what they mean there is that uh, the, prefects, the prefects were no longer in a position to exercise their authority over uh, local and regional authorities. And thus, they have repositioned themselves in a new role uh, that was coined as institutionalization of collective action. Uh, prefects, prefects were mobilized to drive forward joint policy making efforts that was institutionalized with partnership contracts between various uh, stakeholders. Uh, let's come to the current period. Well, 20 years after the first uh, decentralization laws, local policy making underwent another metamorphosis sparked by a new wave of decentralization and simultaneously by uh, uh, new public management inspired reforms of the state. Uh, this Reforms uh, redistributed responsibilities among level of governments. So they changed the ways uh, policy goals are formulated. They changed the, the organization and the instrumentation of the state. Uh, so the, the so-called uh, Act Two of Decentral uh, Decentralization, the first, uh, uh, well, sorry, the uh, Act Two of Decentralization strengthened uh, the autonomy of local authorities by giving them full responsibilities for policies they used to share with the state. Uh, this movement was extended uh, in the following years with the creation of uh, very powerful metropolitan governments and simultaneously, uh, new public management inspired reforms were implemented to restructure uh, the state administration. Uh, all these reforms were combined and uh, they have resulted in uh, a dynamic of withdrawal of the state from local policies that were fully devolved to local governments. Uh, there were this, uh, this withdrawal was accompanied by changes in uh, the way the state uh, intervened in, at the local level, proceeding less on the basis of hierarchy or on uh, the basis of horizontal negotiations uh, than on new instruments, new incentive incentivizing uh, instruments that allow the national government to steer and control autonomous local government and to do it at a distance. Uh, this, the evolution 
that local public action has witnessed since the beginning of the 21st century are thus very paradoxical with a reinforcement of local autonomy over decision making and the implementation of various public policies on the one hand and a reassertion of the state capacity to control and to steer these policies, these local policies, on the other hand. Uh, maybe I should be more precise. It's less a reassertion of the state capacity to the, than of central agencies' capacity. Uh, and maybe to be a li little bit less uh, French, I should say that uh, uh, this analysis is not specific to the French case. Uh, the same dynamics of change of changes have been observed in other European countries, such as Great Britain or the Netherlands, where the spread of principles of market regulation in public action, which are embedded in uh, new public management reforms, was accompanied by the introduction of new policy instruments that allowed the state to regain its capacities to remotely control uh, autonomous actors. So how, how do French scholars uh, analyze uh, and uh, explain this uh, paradox uh, I've seen that uh, Charlotte Alpern will uh, give a presentation in the next uh, webinar you organize. Uh, you definitely should attend this uh, webinar and listen to Charlotte. Uh, and a uh, presentation will be on, uh, we will deal with policy instrument, uh, which is a, a, a subfield of uh, public policy analysis that uh, studies uh, policy instruments and that provides a useful analytical uh, framework to understand the mechanisms uh, at work in the, the paradoxical evolution that I have just uh, presented. To give uh, an uh, illustration and to go quick because I, I've already been speaking quite long. Uh, I will end, end uh, this presentation with uh, a quick analysis of uh, three uh, new policy instruments used by the state to steer and control uh, local policies. Uh, the call for projects, uh, labels and awards, and uh, performance uh, indicators. So let's begin with the call for projects. Uh, in a growing number of sectors, the programs promoted by the central state toward local governments are now implemented through competitive bids and uh, earmarked uh, transfers that tend to replacing uh, block grants. Uh, this call for projects are firstly an instrument, an instrument to manage for managing uh, budget shortage. As in period of austerity, uh, call for projects uh, allow the state to be more selective in its uh, budget allocation, not to give to all the cities, all the region, but uh, only to, to the winners of this co competition. In addition, uh, uh, the call for projects is respectful of the principles of local autonomy, as the projects are designed, developed at the initiative of local actors. And finally, competition for access to state funding favors emulation by uh, driving applicants to be innovative in order to stand, stand out in the competition. But the main impact of this competition is to uh, encourage candidates to conform to national expectations. And well, they do so. Uh, cities, uh, regions are, free, uh, are autonomous, but uh, they know that they have to develop projects that respect uh, what is expected at the central level. Otherwise, local governments lose fundings they are dependent, dependent on to, in order to, 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 to act, to develop uh, public policies. 
The second uh, type of instrument I'd like to consider uh, is uh, purely honorific. Uh, it's uh, labels, prizes, awards. Uh, you've got here three uh, example of this, uh, three examples of these uh, uh, recognitions uh, through each uh, the, the French state and uh, the European Union uh, showcase a city for its policies. Uh, these uh, prize awards label have uh, experienced a recent boom in, uh, in French uh, public action. Uh, just as uh, call for projects, uh, labels and awards can be uh, considered as instruments to manage uh, budgetary shortage, uh, as uh, they don't cost any, they don't cost anything to the state. Giving uh, a city uh, uh, this kind of title, you're the, the best city for uh, developing uh, startups. You are uh, the most inclusive city. Doesn't cost doesn't cost anything uh, to the state. Uh, so it, it and like calls for projects, labels, and awards serve as uh, incentivizing tools than, that rely on competitive mechanisms. These soft instruments allow a state that has no longer the authority and the funds uh, required to impose its priorities uh, to the local government, nor even the, the expertise, expertise to define the solution. Uh, it allows the state to remotely influence local agendas and uh, and policies. Uh, as uh, well, this part will uh, will in interest uh, Osmani. I think uh, the impacts uh, of these uh, instruments go beyond merely the uh, local governments that play the game of earning labels or winning uh, awards. In fact, labels and awards contribute to the mechanisms of policy mobility, policy transfer, as they favor the national circulation of objectives, of solutions that are developed in one place towards the rest of the, of the, of the country. As, by distinguishing one or a few uh, local authorities, uh, the state sets them up as models for the rest, providing all the other cities, all the other uh, local authorities with both a benchmark by which they can uh, uh, self-assess uh, their performance and a list of best practices, good practices with which uh, they can uh, try to up the game. Uh, here again, as it was a call for projects, uh, um, uh, using tools of government, of government that have more to do with soft law uh, than command and control uh, allow, allows the states to regain its capacities to steer local policies. Uh, uh, well, and that said, it's worth noting that the appeal of these incentivizing instruments appear all the greater because they are frequently linked to other more classic instruments. This is the case with uh, lab labels that can be linked to tax benefits and to a great, even greater degree uh, with awards that pl place uh, winning cities with winning regions in a position that enable them to influence the creation of new regulations and to access uh, national uh, funding. Uh, I'll end up with uh, performance indicators, uh, the use of these instruments that are favored by new public management reforms has spread very rapidly in French public policies, as in many other European countries, uh, performance indicators, which serve as the basis for countless reporting, monitoring, auditing, benchmarking mechanisms have had very, very powerful centralizing effects. 
uh, on one hand, uh, the demands of continuous reporting and uh, uh, audits organized by state agencies encouraged local actors to focus on achieving the objectives that uh, these uh, indicators measure to the detriment of all uh, other uh, objectives and that, therefore to focus on the goals that are set up by the state. On the other hand, uh, these indicators are used to compare the performances of local authorities in terms of benchmarks by showing how some of them lag behind, the national agencies drove local actors to take action, to catch up, while also naming benchmark cities whose good practices could act as models in this uh, regard. Uh, okay, to, 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 to sum up uh, the main uh, least lessons of this uh, presentation, uh, I would have two or maybe three main, main, uh, main lessons. On the empirical uh, level, uh, I try to show that there's a dynamic, dynamic of increasing power of local governments in French public action, but the state uh, withdrawal from this from local policies done has not led to the disappearance or even to the reduction of the state's hold on local public action. On the contrary, it has allowed the state, a recomposed state, to renew its, its instruments of inter of its policy instruments uh, through which it has acquired new capacities for steering the policies that are carried out by local government. The, uh, uh, the second uh, lesson, lesson relates to the evolution of uh, analytical frameworks favored by in French sociology of, of public action. Uh, in connection with uh, the, the, these empirical changes. Uh, the, the loss of, uh, of uh, um, state centrality in local public action after the decentralization uh, in the, of the early 90s and the reaffirmation, reaffirmation of this centrality, of this state centrality under the effect of uh, new public management reforms of the two, 21st century have been mirrored in social, sociological analysis. Uh, after the decentralization law, uh, scholars, French scholars abandoned the state-centric approaches of the past in favor of more pluralist uh, approach, pluralistic approaches that consider the interaction between multiple uh, actors uh, in uh, urban governance. The state has thus been progressively relegated uh, to the periphery of research agendas and uh, public action as its withdrawal from local policy accelerated in the, uh, in, the, in the recent years with the deepening of decentralization and with numerous uh, administrative reforms. The reintroduction of the state into uh, the sociology of uh, local public action that has been observed in recent years is all the more uh, striking. And so I will end up with a third and perhaps most important lesson that can be drawn from the French sociology of local public action that concerns the mechanisms of political centralization. Uh, as the Fre French case uh, indicates, Decentralization can both lead to a reduction in the central government's control over local action and contribute to its strengthening. In the French case, the empowerment of local governments over the past de few decades has been extended more recently by a reciprocal empowerment of the central power vis-a-vis -vis towards the local authorities. In other words, uh, legal, legal decentralization can lead to further political centralization. Well, that's it. Thank you for your attention and sorry for being too long. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ronan. You 
you you went too long. Uh, for thank you for this nice conclusion of your of your presentation. So we already have two two questions. So the first one is for Anne Cecile. Before giving the again the the word to our speakers, I just uh, I want to stress that uh, the 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 French authors of the books are not necessarily. Uh, specialist of Brazil, and most of them are not <laughs> specialists of Brazil. So this is why the, uh, we will not be able to give most of the case very precise answers on the transposition of the approach to the Brazilian case. But maybe we can give some some clues and, and some uh, and some uh, indication. Uh, so the the first uh, question was for uh, was for uh, Anne Cecile. Uh, uh, concerning the uh, Brazilian parties, which are less loosely structured as in France, with a lot of moves, uh, uh, if I if I am right, between the political parties, and how far is the the approach of political parties that you that you presented and Cecil is can be re relevant uh, for the Brazilian case, or at least for 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 other cases with. With a, with a different structuration of, of uh, political parties. So, and then I have, then there are two questions for Renaud, but maybe Anne-Cécile, you can answer first. Yes, uh, maybe a few words. Um, as you said, Patrick, I'm not a specialist at all uh, of Brazilian parties, but. Um, uh, what I can answer to this question is uh, maybe uh, proposing a research programs <laughs> to answer the questions. Um, because of course, uh, all these uh, 30 parties won't have the same uh, impact on uh, public action. But uh, one of um, my points uh, in my presentation was to say that it is interesting to uh, analyze them. Uh, the link between parties and uh, public policies without uh, asking the question of influence or impact. So um, maybe uh, something to, to, to look at would be um, to look at which parties in these uh, 30 parties uh, are really interested in uh, public policies, which parties um, produce expertise on uh, public policies, which ones uh, have uh, enough resources to um, set up uh, commissions, to invite uh, experts and so on, to, 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 to build uh, uh, expertise and reflection on uh, public policies. Uh, and uh, doing so, uh, what could be interesting is also to, to look uh, at um, uh, the people uh, parties work with. I mean, uh, do they uh, work with um, academics, with uh, civil servants? Uh, I mean, wh what is the, the, the basis for their uh, possible expertise on um, public policies? Um, so maybe uh, looking at the ways uh, Brazilian parties work on public policies or not, uh, we could uh, make categories um, to, to, to and, and, and distinguish between uh, these, um, uh, the, 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 these 30 parties and distinguish between them uh, according to the, their relation to uh, public, issue, public policy issues. Uh, thank you, and Cecile. And uh, if I, I, I use the opportunity to 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 add something, so maybe uh, to um, to shed the light on the on the on the on the main difference between uh, France and Brazil concerning political parties. That the fact that in, in France we are in a majority majoritarian uh, political system with a uh, with a weak uh, parliament. And that means that uh, the interactions between between political parties are, are not so relevant for the understanding of policy formulation and uh, 
uh, and the policy uh, decision process. And uh, I would say that it, it is less the case in Brazil uh, because of the uh, a highly fragmented uh, partisan system and the importance of uh, negotiation and interaction between parties uh, in parliament. So, but that doesn't mean that the, the approach that NCC presented is not relevant. Uh, uh, on the contrary, I would say that the, the approach focused on the interaction between different actors uh, is very relevant from for Brazil. But uh, in so the the idea you um, you mentioned of of uh, programmatic uh, networks, maybe in Brazil, uh, programmatic networks uh, include different political parties, which would not be the, the case in France with a programmatic network uh, related to one party, but with other actors, but rather non-directly partisan actors. Uh, so we have two questions for Renaud. The first one on the definition of policy instrument. You know, how far you are uh, a strict follower of uh, of the, the 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 notion proposed by maybe b before Charlotte Alpern by uh, Patrick Gilles, you. You, you also mentioned and uh, Pierre yeah. Lescroom, and the the other uh, the other question is more focused on the the role of uh, private uh, actors. Uh, the, the question is focused on protected areas, but may, maybe you could say a word on the role of uh, of uh, private actors at the local at the local uh, level if i understand right the, the question okay uh, okay uh, so the first question uh, on uh, about the definition of uh, policy instruments uh, yes uh, osmani i used uh, the definition proposed by uh, charlotte uh, with uh, patrick legales and pierre lascoum uh, that was inspired by uh, christopher hood's uh, work uh, if I had to challenge their work, uh, it wouldn't be the definition, but uh, that typology. Uh, because the, the instruments uh, I studied do not fit exactly in, uh, in this typology, but well, uh, typologies are always ideal, ideal typical. So it's quite, uh, uh, it's not very surprising. Um, uh, I, I'm not sure I understand perfectly the question Igor Karneor asked uh, about uh, protected areas. Uh, well, uh, if by protected areas you mean some natural areas that the state uh, wants to protect from uh, urbanization or economic exploitation, uh, I don't know much about Brazil, but I think the difference is very, uh, the situation is very, very different. And when it comes to, uh, to this kind of areas, uh, there are some quite strong uh, legal protections uh, for uh, natural parks or even uh, inside cities for, for some uh, protected areas. Uh, Private agents cannot uh, intervene without uh, legal authorization, and sometimes without uh, legal change at legal changes at the national level. And it, despite uh, the growing uh, uh, autonomy of uh, local uh, authorities, uh, local authorities cannot open to urbanization uh, some areas that have been protected at the national level. So uh, private, private agents uh, influence is, I think, far less important uh, in France than uh, what you can uh, witness in, uh, in Brazil. But I'm not sure I've been uh, answering the question you've been asking. I have the impression that you answered the question. So I, I understood it the, the same way, but maybe if Go uh, wants to add something. He can, he can, he can write it on the on the chat. Uh, Renaud, again, uh, another question for you uh, from uh, from Osmani. Uh, yeah. An, another general question. <laughs> yes. Maybe, maybe and Cecile and I we we can also uh, 
Uh, yes, uh, all of us can have. A, yes, because we a, can have different answers. Maybe. Yeah, and, and it's a general reflection. Uh, well, not, uh, uh, especially focused on the on your topic. Maybe you want to to start, Patrick. No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> Go on. Uh, okay. Uh, what would I say? First, I would say that uh, you can do some researches without typo typology. Uh, typology is a, is a can both be an uh, output in a research and can be uh, uh, an input that's useful uh, to, 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 to start thinking your object. Uh, that's the first uh, answer. The second answer is that, uh, well, if, the, if your empirical uh, object uh, doesn't match uh, typology, uh, you've got to create, your, you can create your own typology. You can change, uh, you, you can make a new typology, uh, uh, or you can uh, work without any typology. Uh, but, well, that's, and Cecile, Patrick, maybe you've, you'll have more uh, inspiring uh, <laughs> answers than uh, what I did. I, and Cecile. Uh, yes, I would say that things become interesting when empirical objects don't match uh, typologies. I mean, if we just uh, find things which confirm uh, already, uh, uh, you know, well-known typologies, we don't have anything uh, to do. So, I mean, this is the interesting point. I mean, it's to, to go further, to give more precision, more details on uh, social functioning. So this is a, an interesting challenge when uh, objects don't uh, match perfectly typologies. Uh, and it's not a problem, it's uh, an opportunity. I mean. <laughs> I would give the, the same answer, but uh, maybe uh, uh, adding that uh, uh, typologies are for me more a uh, good starting point that uh, uh, more a starting point than a, a result. Even if sometimes if you have a, a lot of results uh, which do not match to, to, to the existing typology, you can propose a, a new uh, typology, but uh, typologies are very useful, uh, are especially useful, useful when you do a comparative uh, research. So it's, a, it's a, a good method to select cases uh, uh, using uh, typologies on political system, on the uh, relation between the local and the national level. We have also several typologies uh, of the comparison, more in my research field, uh, between the welfare state to the health system. So it's a starting from typology is a good way to to select cases. If you prefer to work on the, on the more similar cases or on different cases, and uh, for for instance, by um, uh, if you want to work about policy convergence, but then uh, most of the time, uh, the empirical results is is different from the from the from the from the typology. So. Um, I think it's it's, uh, it's more an, an an interesting result than a problem to to have uh, um, uh, empirical funding that uh, funding that 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 do not match the existing the existing typology. So I I don't see. Can I question? Can I can I yes. ask a Another question, sorry for oh, maybe, jumping oh, in. But uh, Osman, uh, you, you, you have also uh, your own answer to your, to your, to your question. <laughs> to, my, to my question. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I perfectly ag agree with you uh, on the thing of typologies. And this is, uh, this is a very interesting uh, discussion and I'm very excited to see what uh, Charlotte is going to uh, present uh, next uh, week because we have... Uh, um, in different uh, uh, opportunities, uh, I've been uh, uh, discussing with uh, students the, the, the instruments uh, approach and, and their typology. And sometimes uh, uh, the typology doesn't uh, match uh, the empirical reality. So uh, I think this is a very important thing uh, for students to uh, uh, to hear from you and to um, think about what what they can do uh, when the type because the typology is very good, 
but for cer certain empirical objects and uh, and for for Brazil, for instance, maybe it's uh, it's not not sufficient. So it's interesting to think how uh, we can uh, uh, move beyond uh, the, the typology, and um, and uh, definitely uh, it's going to be great to have a uh, Charlotte uh, next week. Uh, uh, to discuss with us this uh, this topic, uh, but I, I wanted also to ask a, a, another question. This is why I, I jumped in, uh, and uh, th the question is uh, uh, that I, I would like you to uh, develop more is uh, related to uh, methodology and your uh, research strategy. Uh, so one of the things that uh, Patrick and, and I highlight in, in the introduction of, of the book is the uh, the specific strategies and the, the, the particularities that uh, the, the French approaches have to uh, uh, policy studies. So I would like you to uh, to open a little bit of your your inside kitchen. Uh, to us uh, and especially to inspire students on how, okay, if we want to, uh, the, the question of, of Julia was very interesting. If we want to understand uh, Brazilian parties impact in, in, in public policies, how we should do considering that there are so many. And uh, so uh, I wanted you to, to, to comment on this and bring some, uh, in order to bring some insights for students uh, willing to, to, to start their research uh, on either governance, uh, local level or political parties, so. And, and if I can add to your question, uh, also uh, maybe uh, give some, uh, give some methodology, method, methodological uh, advice because uh, that was also raised in the, in the previous uh, sessions of the of the webinar, how to how to deal empirically with with the with the approaches that are presented. I don't know who wants to to start. And Cecile, I. Oh. Um, okay, so um, in uh, the, the the discussion I had with my colleague uh, Rafael Cos about this uh, the this question, how do political parties work on public action, is actually a, a kind of uh, renewal of methodology to assess the impact of political parties on public policies. Our proposal is uh, not to assess a correlation between uh, ruling parties and uh, policy outputs. Uh, our proposal is um, not to just see if when there is a change in the party in power, there is a change in policy outputs. Um, our proposal is to uh, enter the party black box, as we can say, to see, uh, but to look at the way uh, policy issues are concretely dealt with with party members. Do they set uh, thematic commissions, for instance? Do they work with uh, academics, with uh, political scientists, with sociologists, with uh, 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 economical scientists? Um, this, is, this, this was our proposal, just to, 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 to not to have only quantitative approaches, but to really have a kind of uh, even ethnographic approaches to study parties and to really uh, consider, um, you know, these um, spaces where uh, um, political parties members discuss on uh, policy issues, to have a look at uh, the material support they use to, to discuss these issues, do they produce, um, uh, you know, reports or um, specific notes and so on? So, um, in a way, uh, our proposal is to 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 ask other questions, but this means uh, studying in another way uh, the link between uh, parties and uh, policy outputs. I don't know if that was clear enough, but 
presence. It was uh, one of. Well, I'm not sure I will say something very new or interesting, but uh, I try to answer at least. Uh, well, as uh, as any sociologist, I would say that uh, the basis is comparison. Uh, the basis to, uh, to 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 understand and explain uh, is is comparison. When it comes to uh, central uh, local relations, uh, this compari uh, the comparison uh, can be done at at least or, or can be done. That's what I do at least. And at two levels. Uh, first, uh, you've got to 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 to, to compare different cities, uh, different local authorities. Uh, for example, when I've been working on uh, awards and uh, labels, uh, for each uh, award I've been working on, uh, I did some surveys at the national level, uh, within administrations that, or within agencies that uh, or within the U European Commission where these uh, awards uh, were designed. And uh, I always add uh, different, uh, I always study different cities to try to understand uh, how the same policy instruments uh, is used by uh, different cities or how different cities react to this uh, award uh, supply. Uh, and um, uh, it's very, very, and the second level of uh, comparison is between uh, different uh, awards or different la labels, because I was trying to understand, uh, uh, when I try to understand how these new policy instruments uh, uh, worked, uh, I, it was quite difficult to, 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 to have a general answer. Uh, and uh, I've been comparing uh, different uh, different uh, awards. For example, one uh, which had led to an intense competition uh, between all French cities. All of them uh, entered the competition to be uh, uh, awarded uh, as a Metropole French Tech, which was uh, an award that said that you, you were the best place for startups that wanted to grow fast and become the, the next Google. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, I, uh, I studied uh, other, other labels, for example, the diverse city labels uh, that was promoting uh, uh, diversity and anti-discrimination uh, policies uh, at the local level. And uh, this uh, label didn't uh, succeed. In fact, five years after its creation, there were only two French cities that are tried that are tried to, to 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 win the award and it's by comparing different labels different comparing uh, uh, different cities and their uh, the way they, they seized these uh, offers that it was uh, more or less uh, possible to uh, uh, to understand the way the, the processes and the mechanism uh, that were behind uh, these uh, new policy instruments Thank you, Renaud. Uh, I don't see other questions. I don't, don't know if there are questions on the on the on the YouTube channel because I don't I don't see them. Uh, so, so if there are, uh, Osmani, do you know if there are? No, there are no questions on YouTube. So, so if there are no other questions, uh, uh, I think that we can we can f finish the the session uh, now. Uh, maybe I, I will say a few words, uh, kind of a conclusion, because it's the last uh, uh, because it's, it's my last session as a moderator. Then the for the, the two uh, for the, for the two next um, sessions, uh, Osmani will, will directly be the moderator. And as already mentioned, uh, next time you will have uh, 
the presentation of the chapter on policy instruments by, by Charlotte Alpern, and also the presentation of the, of the chapter on, um, on the sociology of fields and the, how to use the sociology of fields uh, developed by Pierre Bourdieu, uh, uh, how to use it how to use it to understand sociologically uh, public policies. And it will, be a, the, it will be presented by Vincent Dubois who authored that, that, uh, that chapter. And in two weeks, there will be the, the last, uh, the last uh, firework uh, seminar with two, uh, with, with a, uh, sorry, not two, three, uh, three presentation. Uh, uh, presentation by um, by uh, Thierry Del Delpeche on the sociology of law and how how it is used um, in uh, in uh, public policy. Uh, also presentation by um, by uh, by F. Fouilleux. Uh, she wrote the chapter on uh, on global. Uh, on global public policy and the transna transnationalization and internationalization of public policy. And the third uh, speaker will be Carla Tomazini. And she's not, uh, she's not French. Uh, she's a uh, Brazilian and uh, Italian, uh, but she, she was in France and she will more, she will be more able than, than we are to, to ask two questions concerning specifically Brazil because she wrote a PhD on uh, Brazil and uh, and uh, Mexico, and uh, she will make a presentation on the the cognitive uh, approaches. And uh, I think that it, it shows the, the how it is useful to um, not only to compare uh, countries, which is of course very interesting, but also to compare uh, to compare approaches uh, uh, to go compare approaches used in, in France, but also approaches used uh, in Brazil. And this is the, the work we are doing with, uh, uh, with uh, Osmani, especially concerning policy transfer, policy translation, and it's, it's a very, very stimulating cooperation, which can also lead to, uh, to comparison between France uh, and Brazil. And uh, uh, for instance, now I'm involved in a project proposal on the health policy, but also including uh, Brazil. So I think that we have not only to change on our approach, but also on our cases. And uh, it would be very stim stimulating to have more comparison between France and Brazil. And I was thinking also about it, and not only on political parties with a very strong difference on, on political parties, but also on the, the topic um, of uh, Renault's uh, chapter. Uh, concerning the relation between the between the the center and the, the local authority in Brazil, it's the, the states in a federal system. But uh, in in a, a lot of federal system, you have the, in a way the inverse process than, than in France with a, a centralization, a growing political centralization of the of uh, federalism, and which is also related with the the issue of. Uh, uh, governance with the government, or government with uh, with uh, with uh, uh, sorry, government with governance. <laughs> yes, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm uh, confusing to, to, uh, the two notions, um, but but it shows that even uh, diff such different cases as Brazil and France can be uh, analyzed with the the same kind of uh, uh, lenses focused on the. Uh, the interaction between different le levels of government and with uh, different uh, kind of uh, actors, and but also the use of uh, specific uh, in instruments, some of them uh, closely linked to uh, new public management, and uh, new public management was also introduced uh, uh, in Brazil. So I was very glad <laughs> to uh to participate to all these uh, to to these different uh, seminars and of course uh, uh to the to the whole book and which is not the end uh, of the story uh, first because it, i hope that it will trigger more cooperation between brazil and france but also uh, because um 
uh, we are trying to have uh, other versions of the book in uh, uh, other languages, so to have uh, uh, um, some broader exchanges on these uh, on these uh, approaches, which are developed especially in France. So that was what I wanted to say. Maybe Osmani, you want to to add something, and for maybe for the the next uh, next uh, seminar. Yes, uh, so uh, thank you very much, uh, Patrick. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Anne-Cécile and uh, Redo for being here today uh, with us. Uh, uh, as uh, Patrick mentioned, uh, uh, next week we'll have uh, Charlotte Halpert and, and Vincent Dubois uh, discussing here. And there are only two more uh, uh, webinars uh, to come uh, and uh, to close this, uh, this cycle. Um, uh, 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 the, the videos uh, are going to be available uh, after the, the webinars uh, here on our YouTube channel, the Labopi YouTube channel. Uh, and we are also sharing all information on the, uh, our social media, uh, including uh, when the, the pre-order of the book will be available. Uh, so, uh, as uh, Patrick mentioned, it was great uh, to have this collaboration uh, and I'm very happy with uh, the result of the book and I hope everyone can benefit of uh, reading uh, this book. Uh, as I mentioned previously, the idea of this book is to democratize the access uh, to knowledge from uh, other countries, other approaches uh, in, in Brazil. And this is why we made this uh, collective effort to uh, translate uh, and organize uh, the book. And we hope that uh, we will have uh, other uh, uh, books like this with other approaches uh, in, in the future. So uh, this is uh, uh, what, I, what I wanted to say before uh, closing the, the webinar. Again, thanks uh, for everyone. Thanks for the uh, NAP. Uh, staff, uh, thanks for the, the, the translators uh, uh, and um, the, 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 the signals uh, uh, translators as, as well. Uh, and uh, for everyone who's watching us uh, from home, it's uh, been great to have you uh, here. So don't forget to uh, come to the next uh, webinar, uh, 17th of May at 10 o'clock Brazilian time. Uh, thank you very much. That's it. See you soon. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Bye. Mm -hmm.